welcome to Project C. My name is Wovenya Wanyasa. Now this is a show like no other show, I can guarantee you, as we are delving on matters that most people do not discuss. Some people don't even know what's going on. So Project C is an acronym that stands for Project Stop Exporting Evil. If you're in Africa, by now you have felt a little bit of this evil. If you follow up on policies that are being pushed by a parliament, you know, a government, then you realize that there's external pressure to try and exor or rather to try and, and establish different evils. In Kenya, for example, where I come from, we have the Kihika Abortion Bill, Reproductive Health Bill, which is essentially meant to re or, or cover or try to just widen the scope for abortionists to practice here in Africa. You know, the Bible says my people perish because of the lack of knowledge. And one thing that we know for sure is that bad things happen because good people do nothing about it. And Project C is here to awaken us, to know the realities on the ground, to know what's happening, to ensure that we are able to push policies and push against policies that are trying to exonerate, exonerate evils or try to, to lift standards that are evil. We have that responsibility as individuals, as people who go to church, as even people who are of different faiths. Because when we're discussing matters morality, it has nothing to do with just faith. And we have been called to be the good stewards. So Project C is speaking to us. It's also speaking to governments. It's also meant to speak to NGOs, to tell them that we are not going to be their place to dump their trash. We're already peddling with CSC, the Comprehensive Sex Education, which is meant to over-sexualize our children, introduce them to crazy things, and aside from that, uh, pushing, pushing for the legislation of abortion. And that is where we want to start. What do you know about abortion? Hmm? Some people say there's such a thing as a safe abortion. You know, you have an interaction with them and they say, we need to push for safe abortion to protect our girls. But what about the victims? So we just want to break that down. And this is where I push it over to our correspondent in the US, William O'Toole. Please, let's delve into this word, abortion, and safe versus unsafe abortion. Is there such a thing? Thank you, Wavinia. I'm here with my friend, Brother Robert Rudnick, who has been opposing abortion as an activist for years. And uh, we're struck, we're both struck. The things that you're talking about are so heavy. The definition of abortion, the false dichotomy between the false distinction. We think it's a false distinction between safe and safe, unsafe abortion. It's propaganda, but we're, we're struck by how heavy these things are. And we think before we start talking, we should uh, pray before God Almighty to put his words in our mouth so that it would be his words and not our words. Rob, would you lead us in prayer? Okay, sure. Father God, in Jesus' mighty name, we have this wonderful opportunity to, to share about all our hideous experiences in the United States with this thing called abortion, which is really aborticide, because there is a language war going on. And uh, we we want to be good stewards of this, Lord. Help us help our words yes, to be Lord. your words. Yes, help Lord. our deeds to be your deeds. Yes, Lord. And, and, and show us how to proceed with this communication today. To our brothers and sisters in Africa, who are not as far down the path as we are with this, but they're getting there, yes, and and we want to talk to them about the dire consequences to the nation and the people, Lord Jesus, as as you know as they uh, do this. Yes, Lord. And uh, we know where we're, we know where all this is coming from, Lord. We want to talk about yes, all Lord. of this. We really are people that have been very narrowly focused on this issue for decades, both of us. I for longer than him because I'm older than Jonathan, but for he, he has done it for decades, nonetheless. And uh, uh, we just want to proceed with that, Lord Jesus, according to your will. Please bless this. Please empower this. Yes, Lord, please. Not, you know, and, and to be to the glory of Father God yes, by Father. the sword of the word of the Lord, and the blood of the Lamb, you know, with the, under the unction of the Holy Spirit. Just please bring it forward so that yes. we can really communicate to them 
you know, that there is really nothing more dire. Jesus, Jesus uh, absent uh, except for damnation, there is nothing more dire than abortion. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, Lord, put your words in our mouth. Let them be yours, the words of truth, and not our words. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we want to tackle Miss Wavinia directly. Number one, the word abortion. I know Brother Robert can say a lot about this, but the word is a misnomer. What's a misnomer? It's a, it's a word that's being used incorrectly. We don't want to dwell on grammar too much. We want to get to the heart of this issue. But the word abortion originally meant a miscarriage, an involuntary abortion, when a woman miscarries a, a baby through no um, fault of her own because God decided, and her body, which God created, decided that, that the child, for whatever reason, would be naturally miscarried. So, originally, that's what abortion meant. And so now it's kind of a masking word. It's an Orwellian word. It's a word that's being used to hide the reality and the truth. Because it, abortion, what is now being called abortion, the deliberate killing of a preborn child, is actually a form of unjustified homicide, a form of murder. And to call it abortion is kind of... Um, and actually, more than kind of, it really is the wrong word to use. Because when, a, when a, person, a person dies through a miscarriage, it's just like any other natural death. If I die from cancer, or if I die from old age, or in any other ailment, God took me home. No one killed me. No one took a decision to poison me. Um, it's just a natural death. If someone dies at one years old, if someone is a stillbirth, if someone dies at 90, 99 <laughs> years old, it's, it's a natural death, when it is a natural death. And so a miscarriage is the same way. It's a natural death. The Lord giveth, as they used to say and still say it at burials, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Right, Brother Rob? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Well, now people are using that word abortion to refer to the deliberate taking of the innocent life of a baby boy or a baby girl in the womb because his or her existence is inconvenient to that person. So that is nothing less than a murderer or a group of murderers or collaborators or conspirators to commit murder, masking their murder and hiding their murder, just like a, a murderer might hide a body or bury a body or, or wash away the blood, but instead they're grammatically using uh, language to wash away, as it were, their crime. And so we're piercing through that now and saying that it's not abortion, it's what? Aborticide. Aborticide. That was, you, can, you can't even find that word in a lot of the modern dictionaries. This is how thick the language war goes. And it's a war. There you go. It's a war, and that's why it's totally correct for the men to be involved in this. They, they start doing this, you know, this, uh, polemic where, well, you're not a woman, what, what is it to you? You know, well, it's just the opposite. In fact, Wavinia, it's nice of you to chime in, and we don't mind you chiming in as a woman on this issue, but primarily, and that's nice, and we appreciate it. In fact, thank you very much. We appreciate it, but in fact, it is a man's issue because men are fundamentally and primarily responsible for defending the weak and the innocent. And that's what abortion, what is now called abortion, sorry, is. It's a, it's a deliberate satanic targeting of the weakest and most innocent a spiritual war now manifesting for the past century worldwide as a aborticide what's really happening here women when they try to talk you into getting an abortion even even using a lot of abortifacient birth control which causes small abortions they're lying about that when they say it doesn't what is he talking about chemicals or hormones, chemical contraceptives, those pills, those injections, just to clarify what you're talking about, Brother Rob, mm -hmm. those pills, those injections, those uh, implants in the arm, and those uh, IUDs, intrauterine devices inserted into the uh, vagina or the cervical area, too, um, that Dr. Karanja can talk about with, and has spoken about on this channel and others with expert uh, brilliant expert testimony. So we can't go into that, and we're not capable of it. But that's what he's talking about: yeah. abortifacient birth control. So what we're really looking at here is 
all society being recruited to fight a war mm -hmm. against their own posterity and warfare by posterity is, you mean what? those yet to be born children our children and grandchildren that are yet to be born yeah. this is we are being recruited into a war against our own posterity when, when they when people convince us to get abortions okay and uh, and that's what the whole really what the whole thing about is with like you know the pushing loose sex to high school students uh, in sex ed classes we've been seeing this for a half a century okay what they're doing is they're trying to break down their natural modesty and their natural ethics and that because our children are not barnyard animals that's CSE yeah comprehensive yeah. sexual yeah. education it's a lie they're breaking it down because the world is run by Satanists right now okay and they are at war with the entire human race. That's right. Okay. There is, um, uh, it, the Bible is reading like the newspapers should be reading nowadays. And we know about alternative news sources that we can share with you to, to, you, uh, to get you up to speed on a lot of the things that are happening around the world. But basically, once you understand, what happens is when you start spreading People, all, there's always sinners out doing abortions, okay? But the blood guilt falls upon the perpetrators. When when uh, the nation... You're wagging your finger, so get it in there. Get it in there if you want to The nation is, uh, you know, giving uh, protection... Yeah, I can't really say it's legal because it's not legal. Like I meant murder. It's unlawful. It's yeah. unlawful. When they give unlawful under the color of law, as you often say, under color of law and pretense of medicine, they're they're, they're pushing that what it really is. Why is, pretense of medicine? Because medicine was originally, even before Jesus was born, Hippocratic. That means the man called Hippocrates, the founder of medical tradition that we know that we inherited in Western civilization. He he drew a circle around his disciples. And he said um, quite a few things, but not too many. But two of the main things that he said in the Hippocratic Oath were, I won't do any harm. In other words, I've got access to all these chemicals, hormones, different things like that, procedures. I'm not gonna, No one can hire me to kill her husband or his wife. No one can hire me to do abortion. And it literally said that in the Oath of Hippocrates, even hundreds of years before Jesus and St. Luke the Physician from the New Testament, were born, the Hippocratic Oath already was well established and said, I will not give a woman a pessary, what is that? An abortifacient contraceptive. A pessary to induce an abortion and I will do no harm. Well, the Western medical tradition, that's what Brother Rob is referring to, has abandoned the Hippocratic tradition, which is more than 2,000 years old. It's older than the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. They've abandoned it. That's why he said, under mere Color, uh, color of law and pretense yeah. of medicine. Even if they have access to the uh, the Mayo Clinic, um, the highest, most prestigious uh, organizations, medical organizations in the United States, in the United Kingdom, in Europe, the fact is, however much money they have, however many wonderful machines they have, the fact is they have abandoned the Hippocratic tradition. Go ahead. They, and they do that because... Over the past hundred years, with with the help of Marxism and uh, fascism, uh, and you know just flat out Satanism and, and disregarding uh, Christendom, they have they have thought if you hate Christ, you will love death. This is this the modern age has proven the Bible to be so full be nothing but veracity. Now that's from that's from the book of Proverbs, right? Yeah. All who hate me love death. Yeah. And it's Lady Wisdom speaking. Yeah. But Lady Wisdom is the it, that that's that's a uh, personification in the words of Solomon. And she says what you just said, mm -hmm. all who hate me love death. Mm -hmm. She's she's the um, possession of the Lord Jesus Christ. He possesses wisdom. And she and it says specifically in the book of Proverbs, all who hate me love death. So it, um, we have to quit calling it insane. 
and mad and things like that because from the paradigm of evil what are their goals lies theft murder destruction it's satanic it's yeah. satanic including their own destruction including their posterity's destruct, uh, destruction including the entire earth they want it all dead because it all brings glory to almighty god so we're talking about a religious war manifesting also in the spirit in the physical our deception and our obedience to their lies may god forbid is their weapon they're using to fight the creator because that's all they've got that's all they've got and uh <clears throat> things are turning worldwide so, right now so wow. that that little baby mm -hmm. what is that that's the fresh image of god the the, the 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 freshly conceived the freshly fertilized uh, ovum egg of a woman so why do they care about that well because understand understand that satanists also do bible study to figure out how to be more effective in evil because they and, know the bible's true yeah because they know it's true and they hate it they know that god's real and they hate him so they want to resist him with everything they got so they look down the bible and they go oh this will really look at how Look at how Almighty God gets to a level of anger that resembles insanity over child sacrifice. Oh, we got to be big on this. This is literally what they're doing. Okay. So we've established etymologically, historically, abortion originally was a miscarriage. Now, the word is being used. Talk about deliberately murdering, killing an innocent person in the womb. A person well, that's in the same image that Jesus was in the womb. Of the Holy Virgin Mary. By holy, what do I mean? She was set apart from other women. By virgin, what do I mean? She never laid with a, with a man and conceived the Lord Jesus Christ, not through the agency of any man, Joseph or any other man. And, and because God chose to become a man, number one, to become a man, not a dog, not a frog, <laughs> not an angel, none, no other creature, but God became a human being specifically a male child and because god chose not to become a man the way that adam became a man fully formed with no mother no uterus no ovum involved get what i'm saying brother rob because god specifically uh did not uh incarnate he could have he could have fulfilled all prophecy and taken the seed of david and, and by whatever means he chose if that was his choice, he could have become a man and bypassed the womb of woman. But God specifically chose to pass through the womb of woman, to, to fertilize the ovum of a woman, namely the Virgin Mary. Because of that, the demons and Satan and the fallen angels have a special hatred for the womb of woman. The womb of woman, the seed of woman, and they want to destroy the image of the Lord Jesus Christ jesus christ in those persons who are conceived so we've had this russia and japan and germany were well in the early parts of the 20th century when they opened the floodgates of abortion in their nations and it's interesting to me that in world war ii which nations suffered the most well that would be those same three germany japan and russia you know and you consider that on the Eastern Front, Russia and Germany were grinding each other up for years in the bloodlands. They were, you know, that looks like God, judge, to me, that looks like God judging both nations for their aborticide. We're talking about millions of people millions slaughtered in deep cold. You know, you, the men who now have no descendants, or very few, relative to what they would have had if they hadn't been slaughtered before. They, again, these people were taken out of the human race <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and, and uh, the, you know we're seeing this same thing percolate in the united states right now we've had abortion legal for 50 years we had this biggest most powerful nation on the face of the earth uh, in of all time that we're aware of yeah and it wasn't too big for god and we are really you're gonna watch there's a high likelihood that you're gonna watch a lot of terrible judgment come down on this huge and powerful nation. Well, Vinya, well, Vinya, you're you're a you're a Kenyan, and you watched just. Um, well, I was there in Kenya in uh, 2007. Yeah, that was the first time I went to Kenya, I believe. 
And uh, shortly after I left Kenya, there was uh, post-election violence. Well, we are anticipating, well, I don't know how long it's going to last, the Lord knows what Trump will do. Right now it's the 15th, or is it the 16th? 15th of December Something today. Like yeah. 16th, maybe. 15th, it's still the 15th. And America is is ripping apart. And under a condition where the, the so-called good people here failed to organize to resist legalized abortion. Legalized abortion. Which brings me to your second question about this dichotomy. This f fake separation between safe and unsafe abortion. To hell with that, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, in the name of the one who was crucified and is now alive, I'm telling you, don't listen to those goddamned lies about safe and unsafe abortion. No abortion is safe. No murdering of an innocent child is safe. And these women, unless they're retarded, or unless they're children, if it's a 12-year-old girl, I understand she's a victim. She's doing what people have told them to do. If she's of age, she's just as responsible as any woman who threw her child down a flight of stairs, okay? She, she needs to be tried for a form of homicide, okay? because it is, in fact, a form of homicide. And this is a false dichotomy, just like when the, the serpent crept up on Eve and said, Hath God said... Hath he really said, Thou shalt not surely die? Well, yes. In fact, Adam should have said, Eve should have said, Yes, my husband told me <laughs> that God has said, You will surely die. God laid down the law. But in fact, when we believe the lies that are that are whispered in our ears with through that forked tongue of the media, what in fact has happened is that this false dichotomy, what's a dichotomy? That's a dividing. A false division between, uh, it's like, let's use an analogy. If we said there's safe rape and unsafe rape, okay? So, uh, the unsafe rape is bad because it, it, it occurs in back alleys and women are damaged and the men are damaged because the woman might kick the man, he might break a rib, um, he, she might grab his testes and squeeze them, he might be damaged. Uh, she might be beaten, she might lose a tooth when he punches her in the face, so we should have safe rape instead of unsafe rape. It's, it's, it's as absurd as what I just said times a thousand, because we're not just talking about someone being uh, inseminated against her will, we're talking about someone being ripped apart, limb from limb, limb from limb, and I mean someone, not nobody, someone. And the woman, generally speaking, generally speaking, is not the victim, but the perpetrator. The perpetrator. She's the one. We're talking about elective abortion. She's the one under whatever pressure she is. And yes, we should also prosecute not only her, but the people who collaborate with her and pressure her to do it and enable her to do it. And the fake physician who betrays the Hippocratic tradition and his oath, if he took it, <laughs> to, to perform the homicide, He's a hitman. What we're telling you is that this is a lie. It's nothing. There's no complicated way we can talk about it. The safe, unsafe abortion dichotomy is false. It's like saying there's safe rape, there's unsafe rape. There's well, all kinds of examples of lies and murder going hand in hand. Uh -huh. This is one of them. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Because people who, who are planning a murder plot lies, and people who have already committed a, a murder and are trying to cover it up from who? From men of law. That's what it comes down to, um, the third point that I have for you, Wavinia, and for anyone who will listen to the words of our mouth, is that this is not fundamentally a ministry of the gospel. We are interested in the gospel, but first, before the gospel, set the gospel aside. The gospel is eternally relevant, it's eternally commissioned, but prerequisite to, prerequisite to the gospel, that means coming first, is the ministry of the law. And if you're not aware of your sin, you cannot repent. It's impossible. If you don't know you're a sinner, you can't repent. And people who are determined not to hear us when we tell them you shouldn't kill people, you shouldn't rip a baby out of the womb where God has planted it, okay? Let God make the decision about who should live and who should die. Unless someone has committed a crime, unless you can convince a jury that that baby has committed a crime worthy of death. I don't know how you're going to do that. How can a child in the womb commit uh, a capital crime? So the fact is that every abortion, elective abortion, 
is an unjustified homicide. And before that person who chooses that can hear the gospel, they must understand and confess that they've committed the crime of murder. Just like the people uh, to whom Peter preached in the Gospel of Acts, before they could receive the gospel, they had to admit that they had killed the innocent Lord Jesus Christ. And each of these children, whether they're Kenyan, whether they're American, whatever nationality they are, they're an image of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we have no connection with him whatsoever if we murder them and we do not confess it and repent. And that's, that's what we have to have. Now, this brings us to the point of law enforcement. Not, not only do we have to have the knowledge of the law, but in order for the knowledge of the law to be enforced, that we must have weapons. And Jesus Christ, in the, in the Gospel of Luke, commanded his disciples to bring swords. Today, the modern technological equivalent, Wavinya, of a sword is a firearm. And the minimum effective requirement for a firearm would be a pistol, a rifle like an AR-15, or a shotgun like the Mossberg 12-gauge. Let's have another look at that, Brother Rob. Describe to me what you're holding in your hands. Holding a, you put it in the put it in the frame. I, I'm holding a pump shotgun, which are very common in the United States. Go ahead. Go ahead. And uh, there's the stone. And Canada and Mexico, really worldwide. It's one of the most common firearms on the entire planet. There you are, sir. Thank you. And uh, uh, it's considered well. It's a, it's a it's an awesome weapon out to certain ranges and it has and it has uh capabilities of firing you know multiple projectiles at once in a pattern at low velocity but adequate adequate for the job it's uh it can be used for hunting whether for sport hunting or for subsistence hunting and it can be used for self-defense and it can be used for law enforcement and it can be used for the defense of your neighbor, and like you said, law law enforcement. Yeah. Law enforcement. At a certain point... Military. They, it can be used in the military. They have lots of them in the military. Now, Wavinia, we're not telling you, we're not telling your husband, we're not telling your children to break the laws of your nation. Every nation has different laws. So look at the laws of your nation, count the cost, and know what you're doing. But the fact is, the Lord Jesus Christ in the Gospel of Luke said, take swords. The disciples said, here are two swords. He said, that's enough. Later on, he rebuked Peter for using one of those swords to, um, to try to stop his crucifixion, his arrest and crucifixion. But he had already told them, Wavinia, he had already told them that it's um, three times at least, uh, if you read the Gospels, uh, up to that point, the Lord Jesus Christ had told them and they wouldn't hear it. They refused to hear it, but he had told them in crystal clear terms that the Son of Man must go to Jerusalem to be crucified. It has to happen. So, so it was very clear that he wasn't telling them to take swords for the purpose of preventing his crucifixion. So that was a total uh, rebellion on the part of, of Peter to, to act like he was authorized to stop when he ch chopped off the ear of Malchus the servant of the high priest, that was that was in total disregard of the instructions of the Lord Jesus Christ when he had told all of them, all of them, in crystal clear terms, the Son of Man has to be crucified in Jerusalem. He did not tell them to resist it. He told them it was necessary. And they fought him. Read it. Read the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You'll see I'm not making this up. So what I'm telling you is that that's not why he told them to take swords. But the reason he told them to take the means of self-defense, like we have shown you right here, you have to choose what that uh, is, and the Lord will show you. Is not to spread the gospel. We are not, I am not a Mohammedan. We collaborate with them to the degree that they are willing to defend the law of God and the truth and stop this genocide coming from China, wherever it's coming from. They may be our friends, some of them. But I am not spreading the gospel, and Brother Rob does not spread the gospel through the sword, do you? No, no, no. We're not compelling people to become Christians. But God, that doesn't change the fact that God has authorized us to defend our persons in some instances. Sometimes it's time to give up your life as a martyr, uh, as a witness to the Lord Jesus Christ and to the gospel. That's appropriate sometimes. Many have done so. Better men than, than me. 
And sometimes it's very appropriate to defend your, not only yourself, but a child, a woman, innocent people, your neighbor. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ was endorsing. He was not a pacifist. That's what he was endorsing. So, to bring this down to practical terms, what are they trying to do to us? They've not, they're not only trying to impose a, a false dichotomy of safe versus unsafe abortion. Through, I have been watching since at least 2005. This, uh, that's 15 years. This um, propaganda being pumped by eugenicists. Those are people who want to cull Africans, people who want to do, commit genocide against Africans, being pumped into all the major cities in Africa. And over and over and over, the, what they pump is that they're safe and the, the words, the false categories that they, that they push on you is that there is safe abortion and then there's unsafe abortion. That's because they want you, it's a mind trick. They want you to accept abortion because they hate you, because they're motivated by demons. They want to kill as many of you as possible. And it's much more efficient from their perspective to get you to consent to your own destruction than it is for them to fight you if you are resisting. Because number one, if you consent, God is no longer on your side. You see, because now your heart has gone over to your own destruction. And, and what, God will no longer defend your heart because your heart has endorsed the lies. And when you resist them, God will help you when you humble yourself before him. But the moment you believe a lie, now will God step in and ameliorate it and, and try to and try to fix it and try to reason with you? Yes, but you will suffer casualties and you might lose your, your tribe, your race, your nation, and we might lose the continent of Africa if you believe and I'm not cursing here, I am categorizing these God-damned lies. If you, if you bring them into your head, if you allow them to be cultivated there, you'll bring forth death and destruction for your people. So we're telling you, it's a goddamned lie. There is no safe abortion. It's all genocidal. Resist it. And when they come to inject you with things that you don't know what they are, coming from Bill Gates, okay? And when they come to force uh, poisons, hey, take this contraceptive, take that chemical or hormonal, resist them. Don't allow your wife to take it. Don't allow your daughter to take it. Resist them by the uh, necessary amount of force up to and including lethal force when it's justified. And you'll know it. You'll know it. God is not a pacifist. Does that make sense? You know, I'm trying to figure out what to add to that. Well, <laughs> well, it, what, what I would say is what I was trying to get out here a little bit earlier. Maybe yes. I was going to it too soon. Is that what we're dealing with here is a worldwide war on all humanity. And I'll tell you what, for the past hundred years, they have really taken a bite out of Europe, Asia, North America, increasingly South America, and Africa. And um, when uh, you have, we just have to understand that, and that that alone makes it a man's issue because wars a man's issue. A, a war is primarily prosecuted by men, and so is the defense against it. So uh, wake they, up, men! They rise up, men! They're taking it African to us. Men. They're taking it to us. They have drawn first blood for a century. Okay, so we need to understand that that, that is a time for men. So, and, and that is what a time for men. That is a time for men when 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 there's when there's a, a war like that, and wars are not prosecuted like they used to in the traditional ways where nations declare war formally and things like that. We're really seeing that play. No, out it's in insidious. States. It's insidious. It's like I use the analogy of the vampire who's standing there and charming his way into your house. At a certain point, it's, it's best to stop him at the threshold. Well, it's kind of too late, even in most of Africa, at least non muhammad in Africa, it's too late for that uh, because he's already established a threshold. Well, the fact is, um, you can still get him out of the house. You're going to pay a price. But you've got to confront him with the cross, mm -hmm. the cross, the power of the cross and the blood of Jesus Christ. And you, But the bottom line is you've got to tell him, get the hell out of my house. Get the hell out of my house. You don't belong here. You are not welcome here, and you've got to resist him with force. And so, uh, you know, the uh, 
So, so we're we're establishing that it is a war. Yeah, and he, he comes in smiling. He comes in smiling. I understand. Yeah. Understand, like, we would ask things like, why in God's name would they not give the baby a $20 shot of painkiller? Well, they're, they're uh, marketing that pain because when the child's in all that agony and terror as it's being torn to shreds in its mother's womb, it produces a lot of adrenochrome. Oh, and did you know that black African adrenochrome is more valuable than anybody else's? Is that really because true? Because they have a high, a high degree of O negative blood. <laughs> so it's, it's valuable from any group, but it's, it's like extra elite adrenochrome. It's like uh, a youth enhancer and, and a psycho, psychedelic drug at the same time. And the elite rich are crazy about it. And that's got to be an awful lot of the money they make from abortion, in addition to all the body parts. Body parts is getting to be a bigger smuggling item than drugs. I know yeah. about the body parts. Yeah. I don't know much about the adrenochrome, but it's, I'll take your word for it. Yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't it's, surprise it's, it's, it's clear from, from many reliable news sources. And by the way, you know, mainstream media is no longer a reliable news source. Yeah. BBC. I'm talking about BBC. Yeah, yeah BBC. you got to talk about that. Yeah. In East Africa, it's BBC. And In the West, too. Yeah. Now, yeah. I would say that they seem to be making a bit of an exception with because BBC owns Al Jazeera. Or used to. Yeah. Or used to. Okay, maybe that's the thing. You know, they still own it in USA. There's yeah. an Al Jazeera USA that BBC still owns. And it is fairly credible. Yeah. But generally, CBS, NBC, CBC, CNN, BBC, and even now Fox News. Fo now Fox News. They are not reliable news sources. They are they are now propaganda arms of the New World Order. So let's wrap this up. As it's the fifteenth of December, uh, America is is clearly spiraling down into um, a war between the states or a civil war or, or that plus China. Mm -hmm. uh, we're about. We could be seeing in a year's time a hundred million deaths in the streets from this. This is because we have not despised bloodshed, therefore bloodshed now pursues us. That's a direct quote from the Holy Bible. Now, learn from this, Africans, that the possibility that Africa and parts of Asia can preserve the Christian and Western tradition of government, of 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 representative government, of Republican government. I don't mean like the Republican Party. I mean representative government like the United States used to represent. Okay, our Declaration of Independence. Those ideals that say that individual humans have dignity, including the individual human in the womb, right? Have dignity and have uh, unalienable rights from God. Africa can rep preserve that tradition. As you watch the Western world, including the United States of America, implode and collapse, recognize it's not happening just because. It's happening because we abandoned the enforcement of the ministry of God's law. Blood, and guilt, curses we rebelled. on the land and people. We rebelled. We killed our children. God will not allow it to continue. And if you follow in our footsteps, the same death will visit you. Do not do what we have done. Repent. Big international NGOs, big international NGOs, big international NGOs, get the hell out of my country. Satanic organizations subversive to our culture. Big international NGOs, big international NGOs, big international NGOs. Get the hell out of my country. They're here to sterilize our moms, our sisters, wives, and daughters. Big international NGO, big international NGO. National NGO, get the hell out of my 
Their motivations are not good. Their passion is demonic. Be international NGO. Be international NGO. Be international NGO. Get your hair out of my country. Abortion is their cup of tea, eugenics is their motto. International NGO, big international NGO, big international NGO, get the hell out of my country. They're here to call the human herd, enslave our souls to evil. Big international NGOs, big international NGOs. Please get the hell out of our country. We don't need free people. Please get the hell out of our country. So tell these witches loud and clear, and may the Lord rebuke them. Big international NGO, big international NGO, big international NGO, get the hell out of our country. Big international NGOs, big international NGOs, big international NGOs, get the hell out of my country.